Good evening. Uh, where do you think most of your code is in an application? I'd say that in the majority of projects I've done, I, I'd guess it's in this line here, dependencies. It's not actually in the code that uh, I've written or my team has written or the company has written. There's a, a lot more code in the dependencies that forms the uh, execution context of where that code runs. So I'm going to talk about, purely about dependencies. It relates to build tools, but it's not a build tool talk. I'm not going to talk about any of the other features. Uh, so it's something of a, a lightning talk. Uh, so dependencies are, if you think about it, a very important and valuable place, you, place your, uh, your code. It's without your dependencies, your code can't run. You can't pass the tests. You can't ship to production. Uh, if your editor can't understand the dependencies that you're using, you'll get no support in your IDE or uh, editing environment for any of your de dependencies code. So that would be very inconvenient because it would be hard to find doc strings and functions. Um, and if you get the dependencies wrong, uh, you can have very subtle, hard to find bugs. Like if there's a, you have a dependency that depends on another dependency and that version changes, uh, that can cause a lot of problems in terms of introduced regressions or a different API. And also we've had some instances uh, recently uh, that were seen in the NPM world where there were uh, malicious dependencies. So someone took over the account of someone who was publishing a very well-known package and compromised like the majority of the Node.js world <laughs> with, a, um, with a, like, a hacked uh, dependency with some uh, malicious code included. So I'd just like to say thanks to Pyong too for learning me the MacBook <laughs> because uh, my laptop at the moment is, uh, I've tried swapping to Linux, so I bought an HP and that's a multi-week process getting that running. <laughs> just because uh, the drivers are very difficult with the new hardware, yeah. So I'm part of the Flybot team. We build video games, uh, mainly for the Chinese mobile gaming market. Uh, we're a very international team. As you can see, New Zealand, Singapore, of course, China, South Korea. And we welcome Turkey into the mix with Adamit, so welcome to Flybot as well. We're very happy to have him on board. So we're still hiring. So anyone interested in closure and extending the reach of this map, please get in touch or if you know anyone in the community, please let them know. So Lonigan uh, was one of the first ways of getting your dependencies in closure. I skipped over the history before that, which was uh, like reusing <coughs> Java build tools like Maven. Um, it was especially painful, and I don't want to get through another room for showing XML on, uh, maybe an XML on the screen. Uh, but the first real closure build tool I'm aware of was, was Lanigan. Um, this is focused on taking away all that pain that had been before because there really wasn't a closure build tool for going and getting your dependencies, downloading them and putting them in the class path so you could require them uh, and made that easier for a start at least. So it focuses on automation and declarative uh, configuration. So these are, the con these are the dependencies I want. Just go get them for me. And that looked something like this. So the main part here is a uh, description is your like POM XML metadata. There's a bunch of other ones you can have. Uh, plugins is uh, Lonigan's idea of um, build tooling extensions. But the main one is this dependencies. So it would go look up uh, your repositories, Maven repositories, and do dependency resolution on this list. So we get all closure and ring and download those versions. Um, the thing about this, because the, the def project macro and line is declarative, uh, for example, if you use, uh, who here uses uh, IntelliJ idea? Does anyone use IntelliJ? One person, few person, couple, few people. 
And who uses Emacs? Emacs fans, most majority. So <laughs> Emacs has better support in this regard, but uh, both Emacs and uh, IntelliJ work with this. So like IntelliJ can read this file and it can pull out dependencies because it's just a, a keyword and uh, it can go and index those and provide you autocomplete. So that's, that's great. Problems with Line were that when you wanted to extend it, you had to go and learn the plugin API. And uh, I don't even remember that, how to extend it. I've done it before, many years ago. Um, so it was fine up until, for the parts that worked, we could write a declarative description of your build. And when you want to go beyond that into some customization, things got very complicated very fast. Um, you had to go write plugins that you deployed separately, and then you would depend on those from line again. And then you'd be, have to configure your plugins. So it's, it's uh, very complicated. So people said, well, builds are programs, so let's just write closure code, arbitrary code to download our dependencies and configure an environment. Um, and provide a convenient shell for doing that. And then uh, boot does exactly that. So instead of being declarative, you actually call mutating functions that uh, alter the environment. So this is setting the source paths and dependencies again. Still a dependencies keyword. The key difference here is it's actual code in the sense you could put above that, like require a database client and then query the database for your list of dependencies and then just go dependencies as a vector variable. So if uh, you're an IntelliJ, it has no idea what this means. You get no support for uh, auto-completion or if someone on your team uses IntelliJ, they'll get no support for um, that auto-completion. Still uses very similar dependency resolution under the hood, like in terms of versions and security. Uh, you can still sign packages like with Linux and everything like that. Um, and you get the advantage of you can start now uh, write all this code to do custom things and then execute it easily on the front line. So Emacs, I think, supported this before um, IntelliJ did, so it wasn't such a big problem for Emacs users, but still some tooling didn't uh, support it very well. And the other key point of this is it's still based on the Maven dependency infrastructure, so unlike other languages like Rust or Go, you can't just depend on an undeployed artifact that's directly in Git. Um, so you can't just have a Git URL and then have that downloaded and automatically put on your class path. So last year, uh, I think it was the 1.9 release for Clojure, they announced as part of core Toolsteps Alpha. This is a namespace that provides the same dependency resolution you get with Linegan or Maven or Boot. Um, you can still provide Maven-like uh, dependency lists and they'll use Maven dependency resolution and repositories to download that, but you can also do like local file systems um, or Git dependencies. So you can now just put a GitHub URL in, a tag or a SHA, and uh, you don't need any other build tool. You can build, you can use an external dependency, create one uh, data file of your dependencies, which I'll show shortly, <coughs> run the closure core command line and without any build tool and you'll have a working environment um, which is very cool. So it looks something like this. Uh, we're going back to declarative again. So it's like line again. It's just EDN. So you just have an EDN file called depths.edn. And uh, you put your paths, uh, depths into the dependencies. And the um, format is slightly different because you have to be able to specify whether it's a Maven version. Uh, or a git URL or something else. So it's a map of maps instead of a uh, vector of vectors. Um, but it has essentially the same information as we've always used in dependency tooling. 
You can also have what's called aliases, which is like uh, you could have a production environment, a dev environment, a continuous integration environment, and you can configure extra paths uh, to be on uh, your class path or extra dependencies as well, which is very convenient for um, running through different stages of testing and deployment. So we went back around full circle, circle again to declarative and we have the same problem again that um, if you want to extend it, it becomes, I think, quite complicated. Uh, you basically have to write the build tool from scratch. It gives the closure command line. Uh, let's go back to the previous slide, sorry. Uh, this is missing something. It's just a CLJ minus A production hyphen M main um, and then run tests. So hyphen M, you can define an entry point like main uh, and then this takes args which is run tests so you have to like write your own argument handling which boot and line already do for you and then you have to like wire up like decide how you want to write tasks and like write your own data structures for that and just raw functions so there's no uh, you can depend on libraries obviously like uh, EF tests Sure, but there's no um, like native tasks or uh, command line option handling like with boot for it. So you have to write all that again yourself. So you're back to the same problem with line again that it's fine for the simple case. And then as soon as you get to the customization, uh, it becomes very complicated again. Uh, so it's Boot Tools Depths, which is a plugin um, that you can depend on in Boot, which will read dependencies from depths.edn and then let you use Boot for everything else. Uh, so you can support Git dependencies and you can have Boot tasks and that so you get the best of both worlds and you also because it's a depths.edn is now supported by IntelliJ and other tooling you get that uh, tooling support for your whole team instead of uh, boot which is not supported like uh, before depths.edn the way that you would support IntelliJ is that you'd have to uh, write a task in boot that would programmatically generate a fake Linegan file so that IntelliJ could understand the Linegan build, even if you didn't have a Linegan build. So now you can get away with that, uh, do away with that nonsense completely and just have a depths.edn file, which is supported by all the tools. Uh, there's a Linegan plugin, there's a boot plugin, um, Emacs understands it, IntelliJ understands it. Um, it's very easy to write your own tooling around because it's just EDN. And then if you build extra building build tools on top of that, you can use the build tools uh, rather than uh, having your dependencies hidden away. Um, this wealth of knowledge of what your entire application depends on hidden away in a, in a build structure somewhere. Uh, so that's as simple as this. You can just have a vanilla boot environment uh, and have the same depths.en file, uh, even if someone has not provided any boot support at all, and run this boot command. Um, you can make this easier by including this dependency, obviously, and uh, boot build for yourself. But in any project you download with depths.en file, if you want to use boot repo or any other boot command, uh, you just need the scene core field boot tools depths plugin and the depths task. And then you can run any other. Uh, boot task after that and it would the class path and uh, everything will be correct according to the depths.edm file. Uh, so my current recommendation and I'm open to other people's experience about this, I'd like to hear if anyone else has found a better way, is that depths.edm is a closure official supported tool for dependencies. So I think it's good to use depths.en first if you're writing libraries or projects, uh, especially open source, but also for, 
for commercial and house. And then if your needs are not met by the simplicity of the uh, closure command line tool, use whatever the tool that you want that suits your use case. And you can use line again, uh, you can use boot tool steps, um, you can use your own closure program with an EDN reader, uh, a file reader off disk. Um, it's quite easy to extend on. But as a, a starting point, I think this is the future for a common base of tooling uh, that everyone's build tools, everyone's editors understand, and that uh, we can can rely on. The one big problem I would say I've had with uh, boot tools depths is that if there's two ways to use it, the default way is that it will only load those dependencies, but it won't. Uh, overwrite the boot global dependencies variable. So boot will not do dependency resolution. So you can't use like um, boot tooling that depends on uh, the dependencies information such as like conflicts or dependency trees or uh, finding updates. But every, all other normal tasks that depend on those dependencies will work. That's the default way for <coughs> boot tool steps to work. Uh, you can configure it, which I made the mistake of doing for the first six months we used it, uh, to replace the dependencies um, global setting in boot. And that means that toolsteps alpha, which is part of closure, will read the EDN file. It will go through and do a full dependency resolution. And it will provide to boot not just the dependencies you listed in depths.en, it'll provide a list like a hundred things along, like every resolved dependency and dependency of dependency that you have. And then if you override boots dependencies with that, it thinks those are your original dependencies, not resolved dependencies. So it will go and it will resolve all of those hundred dependencies a second time and all the dependencies with those dependencies. And then you'll end up getting uh, very slow builds and uh, caching issues. So you either have to accept um, you know, build times on CI in excess of 15 to 30 minutes, which for me is unacceptable, or uh, the boot tooling around the dependency conflicts and finding newer versions being broken, um, which is an unfortunate trade-off at the moment. The other option that I do have, uh, which we've not released open source, is you can just, it's only about 100 lines of code, uh, we've got a tool that fully understands the depths.edm file, but doesn't use tools depths alpha to resolve the dependencies. It'll just transform a map of maps into a vector of vectors. And it, as well as that, it'll turn um, the aliases. So if we go back to the previous example, uh, where we've got an alias for production here. It'll also turn the aliases, um, paths, and depths into the appropriate boot format. So you'll, it'll turn this map of maps into a boot compatible dependency vector, and it'll turn this map of maps, if you say you're on the production alias, uh, into um, from map of maps into vector vector. But it won't actually resolve those dependencies, and it'll allow boot to do the uh, full dependency resolution on that. The advantage with that is you get depths.edn, you get uh, the boot tooling, you get full support for boots, uh, dependency conflict, and dependency graph resolution handling. Um, and you get fast build times, so everything's good. One downside is because boot is doing the dependency resolution at that point, you no longer support git dependencies. So if you're interested in the git dependencies, you can't use boot to do the dependency resolution. So uh, at the end of the day, you can do, you can choose uh, whatever advantages and disadvantages you need for your particular case um, out of depths.edm, but you can't have them all at once <laughs> at the moment, as far as I know. So that's hopefully resolved with some future work. So thanks. That's all I have to say about tips to our
Any questions? Okay. Thanks for coming.